right, I'm going to do a quick walkthrough here of Dungeon Scrawl. Dungeon Scrawl is a web-based mapping tool for tabletop role-playing games played in a virtual space. You can certainly use this tool to map for a variety of different um, use cases beyond just virtual online games, but that's how I use it. Um, this tool is developed by Probable Train, and it can be found on itch.io uh, at this uh, web address. Um, from this web address, you can run the tool, and as an overview, uh, you know, you can quickly sketch out maps. Uh, there are a variety of different preset uh, styles. Um, you can export these, whatever you've drawn, um, to PNGs for your virtual tabletop. You can do them as single images or multiple images. Um, you can even um, produce ran dungeons randomly by using tools like Donjon and so on and so forth and, and load those directly into uh, uh, Dungeon Scrawl and edit and refine them. Um, they have different tools and brushes. Uh, and what's really fascinating is uh, the varying layers, right? So with any like digital drawing tool, you can use layers to create um, tiered effects um, for, your, for your digital drawings. And there's even some isometric uh, uh, drawing tools if that's your preferred style of mapping or if you wanted to explore that, you could use Dungeon Scroll to do that. Um, fonts, blah, 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 usage guide, Patreon, et cetera, et cetera. So I am doing this walkthrough today um, in support of my bi-weekly Greyhawk game. And I'm going to show you what our map looks like. I thought it might be helpful to have this type of walkthrough for my other, for the other players in the group. So if I wasn't available, they could continue to be able to make any maps with Dungeon Scroll, continue to update our game session files, and um, not depend on me. <laughs> it sucks to be the bottleneck, and I don't want to do that. Uh, so here's the. Uh, this is the basic UI for Dungeon Scroll. There's a toolbar here on the left, um, and each, and then there's a layer. Um, I guess you would call it a, a layer frame here on the right, and each layer has uh, different details associated with it. it. Has styles, it has hatching, it has shading, um, and you can add and create additional layers. Now. There are lots of other tutorials out on Dungeon Scrawl. I'm just going to give a few kind of uh, quick hits about how I like to use the layering here. Um, uh, Dungeon Layer 0 is my topmost drawing layer. The background layer is what's going to bleed through on the uh, uh, for for this background. So. If I was playing a, a water game or an outs or an outdoor game, maybe I wanted a white, uh, a blue background for water. Maybe I wanted a green background for an an, an exterior map, um, and that's what we would use our backgrounds for. You can uh, change these colors to whatever you like. Um, standard. Uh, web HTML. Um, hex values for colors, or you have a color chooser here. You can turn on or off this grid. <clears throat> you can uh, define the stroke uh, color for the grid, and also the width. And then you can um, use hex maps if you prefer that. And uh, But I, again, for dungeon mapping square, I find to be the best. Uh, you can also have hatching, which I usually turn off, but you might find that interesting, and some uh, some shading tools. All right. So over here on the core drawing layer, uh, we have the same type of things. Um, the style, where you can link the style to a another to a previous uh, layer. Background stroke, stroke width. Um, if you want those strokes to be uh, have a dash, or if you want those strokes to be rough, if you're going to use uh, hatching or not. 
uh, shadow options, grid options, um, extras for importing and uh, of dungeon generated dungeons or a random maze, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So what I'm going to do here uh, after this boring sort of overview of what the UI looks like, again, a toolbar on the left, um, a layer frame on the right uh, with layer selection where you can add additional layers, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you can add a basic drawing layer or you can add an image layer and we're going to talk about that in a minute okay uh you will see that again there is a new version of dungeon scroll out version 2.0 uh, you can follow the link here uh, and this is what that new ui looks like i haven't exactly figured out the new ui for 2.0 so i'm sticking with 1.0 um, also because 2.0 doesn't support all the same features and in the same way as the 1.0 files I've already generated. Specifically, the image layer, it doesn't support import of image layer uh, from 1.0 files. Um, so you might want to experiment with 2.0 or you might want to follow this tutorial about how to use 1.0. What I hear from Probable Train is the 1.0 uh, version of this application is going to remain available um, for the foreseeable future, so no plans to sunset or deprecate any of the uh, 1.0 functionality from this URL. All right, so uh, basic um, file menu here. I'm going to uh, load a save file, browse to that save file from my desktop. Uh, save files are .ds. Once that file loads, we'll start taking a tour of how to use the drawing tools. All right, here we go. So first thing to understand about Dungeon Scroll is that you can pan around this, um, this canvas by holding the space bar and dragging your mouse. So hold the space bar and drag your mouse and you can pan around this canvas. This is an infinite canvas. It can, that means that you could draw and draw and draw and draw to your heart's content. It might generate very large files, um, but it's pretty fantastic in, in that it doesn't have any uh, restrictions or boundaries. Um, over here are the image layers that we were talking about. <clears throat> and again, I have a background layer. This looks a little bit different than the standard dungeon scroll. Uh, this background layer has a a default color of uh, gray. Uh, dungeon layer zero is my primary drawing layer. That's where all of my um, my rooms and hallways are drawn out. Then I have a markup layer, which you can see here um, where there's been some markup in red. And then I have a doors and stairs layer. This is important to have a unique layer for doors and stairs if you're using shadow in your primary layer. So let's zoom in and take a look at what that shadow looks like and why you might want to have a variation for your doors and stairs. Um, so to scroll, it's just mouse wheel, uh, control and mouse wheel. All right, oh, that's pretty close. Uh, so what you can see here is on this left-hand wall, there's a shadow. And if I, I can certainly draw, uh, I can certainly draw a doors and stairs on my dungeon layer zero, but they would have the side effect of having the shadow effect. And that's because the effects that are talked about here in the styles are common to that layer. Um, so one trick that dungeon, um, mappers use with this tool is to create a unique layer for uh, doors and stairs and then turn off shadows for that and that's what's happening here with this file um, i also have another layer for sketching or drawing that wouldn't necessarily be marked in red but would be marked in um, 
gray or black, uh, like you see here with these black arrows. And then finally, an image layer. So layers are added with this uh, add a dungeon layer. Image layers carry, as the name implies, image and text boxes. Um, those are the only things that can persist on an image layer, <clears throat> text boxes and actual images themselves. And you'll see a couple of images here in this map, a couple of text boxes, like this Cords Hall is a text box. This blue um, portal is a text box. This little token is a text box. And I can select the layer and then select these items and drag and drop them wherever I'd like on the map. All right, so let's look at the basic drawing tools. What's going on? Okay, so I'm jumping back to dungeon layer zero and let's just use this space right here. We're gonna, this is where the party was adventuring last night. So I'll just draw just south of it. So uh, there's a rectangle tool here, a pathway, a polygon, a regular polygon that would be used for like uh, circles or triangles or um, other polyhedral shapes that you might want to draw, a wall tool, a door tool, stair tool, a mirror um, tool where you could copy something and then um, once pasted, it would create a mirror image of that um, copied item, and then a selection tool. So real quickly, I'm just going to uh, demo these tools, the drawing of, say, a hallway. Uh, select the tool and drag it out. A one by five, 10 by uh, 50 feet uh, hall if you're if your grid was at 10 foot per square. Um, now each of these tools has a setting, the settings associated with it. <clears throat> um, the settings associated with uh, the, the rectangle tool are uh, snap. So you can choose to snap it to a grid at a snap fraction of here it's set at one and a half, but we could certainly set it at one. And that means that every time I move the mouse, it would snap to an exact uh, a unit of this map. <clears throat> uh, one half is, is helpful. Uh, and then, oops, let's say I drew something and I didn't want to, um, and I wanted to get rid of it. I can jump here and choose the erase and then just draw over it. And now it's gone. I can partially erase things. And I can toggle between the eraser by tapping the E key. So you can see my cursor changes from a blue icon to a red icon just by tapping the E key. There are a couple of other hotkeys um, that you may find useful and I'll try to demo the ones that I do use. Um, so again, let's rejoin this room. Now what's interesting is you can draw things, um, you can make drawings that a but to one another and create a wall and you can draw through them to open up that pathway. Um, so let's put a room over here and another room here. Okay, I think it's probably good for our demo purposes. Um, so that's the usage of the most common tool, the rectangle tool. Uh, you may wanna put a few doors in there, in which case I would jump to the doors and stairs layer. Again, this one's been preset so that there are no uh, shadows used. And I'll show you what the shadows look like when you don't choose this layer. A couple of different styles for doors. Again, the snap and the erase functions and um, a, a thickness option in, in, in terms of how the lines are drawn. So here's a door, it takes a moment to render, probably because this file is so big. <clears throat> I prefer this door style. There we go. And now we've got a couple of doors. Let's drop some stairs in. 
uh, I've just selected the stair tool. Stair tool is a little interesting in that, let's see, let's put the stairs over here. I took, tap the escape key to get away. Uh, let's put the stairs here. So I click uh, once to draw them and then, mm, I don't like that. Uh, I bump up my steps per cell to five. What does that mean? Just means five lines per cell per square uh, gives me a little denser uh, stairway and I can make it uh, this in this case this would be a stair going down into the dungeon from the western edge or going up out of the dungeon uh, from the eastern edge uh, you don't have to use this uh, these ascending or descending notations but you can just by uh, moving your mouse uh, closer to the center of the stairway. You can certainly make those stairways wider if you wish. Or even narrower if my, as my snap grid is set to such a low value. And Dungeon scrolls, not sure which way I want to draw those squares, so it's giving me both options. And I could just simply select and erase whatever I didn't need. <clears throat> I find a five step works well. And there we've got a stair. What does it look like if I draw it in the, sh in the regular dungeon layer? Like maybe. I didn't intend to, or maybe I was getting excited about drawing stairs. But here you can see those are shadowed, right? We were talking about that earlier, that the settings for the style persist layer over layer. Um, great undo and uh, redo functions uh, in Dungeon Scroll. Uh, control Z or Control Y, I believe, for the redo. <clears throat> and uh, clearly step through and undo stuff. I'm not sure why it's not undoing the items on the layer that I was just working, but maybe it's linked to layers themselves. Okay. So we looked at two tools so far, the rectangle and the stair tool and the door tool. And then as a reminder, there are settings here in each of the uh, tools. Take a quick look at the path tool. This is pretty fantastic for drawing um, uh, caverns or irregular, uh, irregular paths, also useful in drawing arcs. And one thing that's really cool is um, you can certainly hold the mouse down and draw with this, but you could also put it to two points or many points. Um, and rely on the, the snap of the grid. Uh, a couple of settings here about the path tool, which are really helpful, is you can change how big it is, um, how big the radius is. Um, so here I'm going to say uh, 0.5. That'll be half, that'll be the radius will be half the cell size. And then you can make the um, You can have a rounded cap. You can also fit to the curve um, to produce nice uh, swooping arcs, arches, ar arcs, my swooping arcs. And uh, you can also turn on this rough switch to create sort of a cavernous look. Um, so I'll just scribble out a cavern. Uh, now it's asking me to sort of shape, to draw out this, this line to show how rough the cavern walls will be. <clears throat> Whoops. Sometimes we see this in Dungeon Scrawl. It's sort of a bug. Just undo it and uh, try your drawing again, maybe a little less ambitiously. There we go. So sort of a roughened cavern wall. All 
right. Um, so let's get rid of all this with the control Z. Don't need it. Let's go back to our little demo map. So let's say I wanted to get rid of this door. How am I going to get rid of it? I'd use the selection tool and draw a selection around it. I could also um, use rely on the grid to draw my selection around it. Hey, why is it not selecting? It's selecting some. It's selecting part of the corridor. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. Select the door and stair layer. And then just delete key to delete that. Um, so the selection layer, you can again use the grid or you can draw a lasso. Sometimes the lasso isn't as precise as rely on the grid, as you just saw. Uh, polygon tool, jump back to the dungeon layer. Uh, polygon tools useful in drawing irregular shapes or a pathway uh, through multiple clicks of the mouse. And then just double click at the end of your path to complete the polygon. Now, one interesting thing about uh, dungeon scroll in general is if you draw into an open area, you'll join these two objects. Again, helpful if drawing sort of complex shapes in the dungeon. All right, so that was a polygon tool. Now, let's see. I guess you would say an irregular polygon tool. This is the regular polygon tool. This tool I use mostly for drawing um, circles, but it can be used to draw any polyhedral shape. Um, here, a hex that's being drawn out at a snap grid of one. Uh, it, it also has a selection for the snap and also a selection for the number of sides. So circles at one side or zero sides, and you can perform the same function. Now let's say I wanted to have that smaller circle persist with the uh, with that larger circle I drew. How would I do that? I do that by utilizing layers. And I would put um, my smaller circle on a, on a higher layer than my larger circle on this lower layer. Let's see what that looks like. Let's put it on the, let's put it on the DL dungeon layer two sketch layer. Okay. So now I have a, a circle that persists with this other drawing. It doesn't join it or because it's on a different layer. These layers can be moved up and down and the additional layers can be created as needed. I try to name my layers so that I can keep track of them about what I was doing on a specific layer. If I ever get confused about what might be going on a layer, I can turn its view on or off and see what objects are persistent on that layer. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it. Well, I'll leave that little circle. It doesn't hurt anything. Okay, then the wall tool. I'm going to jump back into uh, Dungeon Layer Zero. So let's say I drew this large shape, but in fact it's two rooms. I can draw the uh, the walls for that other room by tracing a path and double clicking at the end. And there I've created uh, walls within my existing shape. I might then add doors or text or something like that for <clears throat> on an image layer. And that, I think that's what we're going to look at next. So rectangle, path, polyhedral, regular polygon, wall tool, door tool, stair tool, 
a mirror tool. I'm not going to worry about too much, but it's a way to copy something and mirror its image. So let's see, let's see how it works. I don't really use this one very much. Oh, interesting. It's going to mirror everything off the off this line. Okay. I don't want to do that because this is a big map. All right. And then select tool. We've already talked about how that works, where you can trace around an element. Uh, you can even partially select a portion of an element. So maybe I want to delete that portion of that wall. Um, maybe I want to copy a portion of that wall with a control C and a control V. Now I have that portion of the wall that I could stick somebody somewhere else. I could stick it somewhere else and rotate it. Uh, let's see, how do I rotate it? Let's not worry about that. This is just a, a, an overview to get folks familiar with how the UI works so that they can do their own exploring with the dungeon scroll. All right, and image layers. That's the last thing I wanna talk about. Um, so an image layer is a, a unique layer that hosts images. These images can be um, added from your own desktop like these token images have been added, um, or uh, they can also be um, selected from the built-in images that are associated with Dungeon Scroll. Uh, part of the problem here is that this banner, uh, to use the new version of Dungeon Scroll, sort of obscures this button, but you can kind of see it hiding here in the top. Uh, so just tapping that will let you um, select from the built-in image library uh, in Dungeon Scroll. Uh, this this day-day uh, stuff is really good. It's black and white. It sort of fit, fits my aesthetic. And you can search here. So let's say I'm looking for a table. Oh, here's a table. And I can grab that table. I can click on it. And I can stamp the table into the image layer. There, I've got two tables added now. And I can scale these tables. I can scale this image. I can rotate this image. And I can add it to my dungeon. That's an awfully big table. To... I'm going to cut it down a little bit. Now you can see what's happening here. The snap is working. so. I might want to turn off the snap. Unfortunately, I can't turn off the snap from this layer. I have to switch to another layer where I have access to the uh, toolbar and I can turn snap off. Uh, snap's hotkey is S. Uh, so you can turn the snap on and off with the S key, just like you would turn the eraser on or off with the E key. Uh, snapping is off. So I'm going to go back to the image layer and now I'm not constrained or snapping to the grid uh, any longer. Uh, so let's put a table there and we'll put a, another table over here, but again, it's still too big. So we're gonna rescale that table. Can make it all really small. There's my teeny tiny table, big table. All right, um, so that's image layer. You can use images to, again, drag and drop your own um, graphical tokens, or you can, like I've done here, again, click the hidden button to go to uploads and see the f images that have been uploaded to this file. And these images can be stamped onto the canvas in whatever way you like. Um, and then a note about text. So let's see. Let's 
zoom out a little bit. Whoops. So again, you can see the infinite canvas here using the mouse wheel to, to drag and scroll. I might be using zoom in the wrong way for this tool and relying on the browser zoom instead of the tool zoom, but I'm not sure. Ah, right, this is what I wanted to point out is in the image layer itself, there is, um, there is a, there's a separate frame for e, for the properties of the layer. So for dungeon layer two, these would be the properties, style, shadows, blah, blah, blah. Um, but the image layer, uh, you can drag and drop uh, assets uh, to be then stamped onto the canvas, but you can also add text uh, by test text. You can change the color and you can change the font. Lots of fonts to choose from. I'm not going to mess around with those. Plenty of colors to choose from. Same kind of uh, hex code uh, color picker. And once I hit add, it's going to add this text here to the, to the uh, canvas. And the same thing is this thing can be drug around, rotated. Uh, whatever you like, and it can also be scaled, which is super helpful to be able to fit into, whoops, uh, into your dungeon, into your map to be, uh, to provide the relative uh, detail. Okay, so that's dungeon scroll in a nutshell. I hope it's helpful to be able to walk through and figure out how this UI works. Um, just as a recap, Dungeon Scroll is a series of layers. Um, the topmost, and in, in think about layers as paper stacking on top of each other. Um, layers are transparent unless you put something on them to make them uh, opaque. Uh, each layer has access to a number of tools, rectangles, paths, poly polygons, uh, walls, doors, stairs, and a selection tool. Um, you can add new layers here. Um, you can add a dungeon layer or a image layer. And again, the image layer is that special one that hosts uh, graphics on the layer. So you could use it for things like tokens or text. All right, I think that's enough out of me. Good luck with Dungeon Scroll. Um, hope that our Sunday night, no, Friday, Saturday, uh, it's, days are changing. Our Saturday, our bi-weekly Greyhawk game uh, can make use of it if I'm not around. All right, folks, take it easy.